Hey there, and welcome back to Transformers Fall of Cybertron. Today, we are continuing our deep dive into modding with a basic examination of the UPK Explorer tool. This tremendous tool has led to a modding renaissance for the Transformers games, allowing us to accomplish feats that were otherwise impossible or unreasonably tedious before. So, what does the UPK Explorer tool do exactly? The answer to that is yes. I really can't think of any better answer than that. Honestly, with the ease and excellence on how this tool operates, the possibilities of modding have skyrocketed, and it has made the use of all other tools almost completely obsolete. There are a great many topics to be covered with this tool, many of which I will cover in more depth in their own subsequent videos. This first video is just to get you acquainted with the basic operation and navigation of UPK Explorer, and help you accomplish some of the more basic modifications. So, without further ado, let's get this show started! You'll find a link in the description for both the UPK Explorer and the TFC Installer. Once you've downloaded and extracted both tools, find some place where you'd like to store them. Myself, I just keep both in my Programs Files x86 folder. But feel free to put these wherever you want. And once you have your folders placed, we can proceed by opening UPK Explorer. You may get an antivirus notification, just ignore that and proceed. It is completely safe. Once you have UPK Explorer open, there's going to be a couple of things you're going to want to do. When the program first opens, you're going to be in standard mode. You're going to want to enable advanced mode. This will give you the ability to modify specific packages, instead of creating a game patch. I'll run through what that means more later. Next thing we're going to want to do is set up our working folder. So what I like to do create a new folder in my Steam Apps Common folder, as that's where the majority of my Transformers games are stored, and simply call it Working Folder. Then, once you've made your folder, head back into UPK Explorer and click Set Working Folder, and just browse to where your folder is, click inside it, and then click Select Folder. Everything I want to import or export will now be saved in this folder. Now that we have that all set up, let's now open our game folder. For my example, I'm using Fall of Cybertron, but any game will do. Just click inside the folder, which in this case is Transformers Fall of Cybertron, and then click Select Folder. You get a box that pops up, just click Fall of Cybertron again, and once you have, all the packages of the game will begin loading. It is here you now have access to the heart of the program. You will start under the Create Game Patch tab, which contains a list of all the packages loaded in the game, which you can find on the box to the left and it will allow you to modify just about anything in the game that can be saved as a patch, that you can then later install with the TFC installer, which I have a tutorial on elsewhere that you can check out later if you'd like. Typically, most of the modifications you'll be making will be under the Objects tab. There are far too many file types and topics to sift through, so I'll save most of that for subsequent videos. This video is just to help you understand basic operation and navigation of the tool. Next, you have the Extract Textures tab, which will allow you to extract all the textures from the game. You can narrow these down by type, pixel format, and storage. Typically, you'll be after the PFDXT1 and PFDXT5 formats. You can even search the name of a texture if you're after something specific. Like so. Next, you have the Create Texture Pack tab, which is currently blank, but we'll cover that in more depth shortly. Next, we have the Materials tab, Materials control certain visual parameters for characters, most notably primary and secondary colors, how metallic a character looks, how intense their energon is, and other such elements. These can't be modified directly here presently, so you'd have to go into a specific package to make said changes. Looking to the right will also give you specifics on the material in question. You have a textures tab, which shows you all the textures this material uses a Properties tab, which I'll cover in more depth in a later video, and a Packages tab. I mainly want to highlight the Packages tab, as it will tell you what packages use said material, allowing you to find it in-game much more efficiently. Moving on from that, we have the Meshes tab, which showcases all the models in the game. Just like the Materials tab, you have a series of additional tabs to the right. There is the Preview tab, which will preview the mesh in question, and allow you to spin it around and check it out from every possible angle. Next, you have the Materials tab, which designates what materials the mesh in question is using, the UV Maps tab, which displays the UV map for said mesh, 
the Bones tab, which lists all the bones present on the model. It is worth mentioning that due to the way the FOC rig works, not all bones will be used on the actual mesh, even though they are all listed here. Case and point, since this is just a head, you're not gonna have any finger bones. And finally, you have the Packages tab again, which again shows you all the packages where said mesh can be found in the game. So, you won't have to have any more guesswork if you're looking for something specific. Finally, there is the Sounds tab, which will allow you to play and extract various sounds in the game. Hang on, I need a parsec! A lot of these files can't be played on this page specifically, but if you open their appropriate package file under the Game Patch tab, they should be playable there. Quit torturing yourself and surrender! And that's the basics as far as browsing the tool goes. But that is just mere navigation. Let us demonstrate just a fraction of what this tool can actually do with a little test of our own. For this example, seek out Elo Free A Eye of the Storm Base. This is the primary file for Chapter 4, Eye of the Storm. And to demonstrate just a mere fraction of what this tool could do, we are going to play as Bumblebee in the Eye of the Storm chapter. To do this, we'll need to import Bumblebee's head mesh, replace Cliffjumper's head textures, and make a few slight visual corrections so he appears properly. So, first thing we're going to need to do is export Bumblebee's head mesh. So, we'll just head to our Meshes tab, and search for Bumblebee, find his head mesh, and click this export button, which will export Bumblebee's head mesh as an FBX file. To keep it simple, export it to your working folder. Then, we're gonna head back to the Create Game Patch tab, browse down towards TR Cliff Jumper Robo, click the plus to the left of that, then click the Charscale plus, and then select RB Cliff Jumper Charscale Head. You'll see a couple options to the side of that. Click the upper left Import FBX button. And since it is set to our working folder, we can just select Bumblebee's head mesh, which is right here. You may see this notification pop up. You have three different options to choose from. For my personal recommendation, I go with the second option. And as you can see, Bumblebee's head has taken the place of Cliff Jumpers. Of course, he appears much more mangled because he isn't using the proper textures. We will correct that now. Head back to your Extract Textures tab, and search for Bumblebee. You're going to want to export from that top right button both the Norm X and the Norm Y texture. Lacking either one of these is going to throw off the appearance of your texture substantially. We are also going to want to export Cliff Jumper's textures as well. So do the same thing. Now you're going to want to leave UPK Explorer for a bit and browse to your working folder. You're going to want to click inside Fall of Cybertron, Exports, PFDXT5. Here is where all your textures will be exported to. Since we are just doing a simple swap, we just need to rename Bulby's textures to have the same name as Cliff Jumpers. That way they will replace properly. So let's move these out and take their names and set them accordingly. Then you're going to want to move them to the imports PFDXT5 folder. Then, once they are in there, head back into UPK Explorer, and then click on the Create Texture Patch tab. Then click the Refresh button. Uh-oh. Seems that we are unable to import these properly, as we are lacking some MIP maps. Alright, no problem. You will now need an image editing tool to export the textures properly so that they actually have the necessary MIP maps. So, I'm going to open mine with GIMP, you can just keep these settings as they are, and head to export as, keep it as a DDS, we're just going to replace it. It is here you need to make two critical adjustments. First, you're going to want to change the compression to BC Free DXT5. Failure to set the right compression type rules on the image not being loaded properly. Then, you're going to want to enable generate MIP maps. Everything else here should be fine, so you can now go ahead and export. All right, now do the same thing for the Y texture. There you go. Now let's head back into UPK Explorer and hit refresh. And they are now working properly. We can now go ahead and click Create Texture Pack at the bottom left side of the screen. The texture portion is all set. All we need to do now 
is adjust Cliff Jumper's colors so he appears properly. In Cliff Jumper's case, there are a couple sections we need to hit. So to get Cliff Jumper looking like Bumblebee, we're gonna need to modify all his material files. To do this, we'll start by opening the Material tab and going to Arm Low, Properties, and Vector Parameter Values. It is here we have all the details for Cliff Jumper's color data. I'll cover materials in more depth in a later video. For now, I just want to make the modifications I want to make. So, we're going to modify custom color B. Do the same thing with custom color A. Both his primary and secondary colors are the same, so it's all the same values. Then, I'm gonna duck down his two color coefficient values, which again, I'll cover in a later video. In most cases, you will only need to modify the arm low material, as all the robot materials will follow the data from that one. And then, I'm going to hit vehicle as well. Now with all the materials done, we have one last modification we need to make. You see, Cliff Jumper actually has two sets of color data. One from his materials, which affects how he appears in cutscenes. And then, if we scroll down, he has the TRSP player character data. And select Cliff Jumper's CPCD, and you have his in game color data. I don't know why Cliff Jumper in particular has two, but it needs to be done, so let's do it. Same thing. And we should be all set. Let's go ahead and click Create Game Patch. Now we can head off, you can head to your working folder, select your My Mod folder, and here you have your game patch, with the mesh, material, and texture modifications all included. Then you could go ahead and rename it to whatever you want. And then if you want to move it somewhere, you could do that. I think I'll just leave it here for now. Anyway, go ahead and open your TFC installer tool. Browse to where your mod is stored. Click Select Folder, Update Fall of Cybertron, wait for it to finish, and you are all set! Let's head in game and see how it looks! This is as close as I can get to Grimlock's last known location until the rust storm clears up! It'll have to do, Sideswipe! You ready, Cliff Jumper? Always! Try not to have too much fun without me! Alright, just keep your channels open in case the rescuers need some rescuing! <laughs> Let's do it! My senses are jammed! Optics barely working! Keep moving! We gotta find cover! It's through here! Look out! Ah, and there he is. Oh, he looks great. Man, FOCB rocks the WFC colors pretty well. And let's check alt mode. Yeah, everything looks great. Before we wrap up here though, I just want to cover one last thing. Aside from creating a game patch, you actually have a completely other option for creating mods. Instead of creating an in-game patch, you can actually directly modify a specific package. Once your changes are complete, the tool will make a copy of that file, which you can then stick into your mods folder and use from there. What I would typically recommend is using this method for early testing, troubleshooting, or if you wanted to have a specific mod on permanently. It is generally never recommended to directly replace a vanilla file, ever. So if you're looking to use a specific mod permanently, stick it in your mods folder. There are some exceptions, of course, when you are actually fixing a bug, then I would consider a permanent replacement. But outside that, I don't recommend it. On the flip side, the game patch method is much more ideal for simple mod releases, like the Cliff B head swap or my G2 Combaticons, because that way you don't have to release an entire modified package. There's benefits to both, you could decide for yourself which one you want to use. 
but generally, that is my recommendation. Alright, and that is a wrap on my basic UPK Explorer guide. Again, this is but a fraction of what you could do with this tool. I will cover more subjects in depth later on. We are just getting started here, so there's a lot more to go through. But this should give you enough knowledge to navigate it smoothly and work out some of the more basic modifications you can make. Now, additionally, if you need any help, there is a Discord server I will link in the description. The Transformers modding server. Some absolutely brilliant minds in there. Accomplishing feats that I couldn't even dream of making. Seriously, you want to see some wicked stuff? Go there. Some of the stuff these guys are working on will blow you away. And they have a lot more experience on this topic than I do, but it's a great place to go and pick up some knowledge or help if you need it. Alright, well that'll do it for this video. I will see you next time with another modding tutorial on a subject I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. AI parts. That's next. I'll see you there next time. Till then, control and create.